What do you get when one of the leading budget TV manufacturers make an OLED TV for the first time? You get the Vizio OLED 65H1. The name kinda rolls off your tongue in a square wheel kinda way, but never mind that. Now, after a few weeks of testing and comparing it, I have some thoughts about it. This is the review. Stick around. Hey guys, it's the Villaman here, home theater enthusiast and lover of all things tech. And on this channel, we review, demo, and compare the tech that entertains you so you can find the best devices and get the most out of them. So what makes this particular Vizio TV so special? Well, as I said, it's their first OLED TV, so it's all new. And OLEDs create the image by having pixel of a control of both color and brightness, so each individual pixel can be turned on and off as necessary. And the resulting infinite contrast with HDR highlights and inky blacks is a hallmark of the OLED picture. It's very different from the full array local dimming or even the edge lighting in a traditional LED backlit LCD TV, which is what Vizio's been making thus far. The TV comes in two sizes, 55 inches and a 65 inch version like the one we have here. It also has a 120 hertz panel made by LG Display, like all OLEDs currently on the market, and has two full bandwidth HDMI 2.1 ports and two HDMI 2.0 ports, one of which has EARC, which sends a lossless audio signal to your receiver. I like the fact that this TV has two HDMI 2.1 ports so you can connect both next-gen consoles at once, as opposed to say other 2020 model TVs which only have one. I'm looking at you, Samsung. So first, let's talk about the design. OLED TVs have screens that are incredibly thin and this is no different. The bezels are pretty slim too, as one would expect, and there's a narrow central stand with a little portion in the back. It's not like the LG C10 stand which has a weighted portion in the back, no, this is more there for stability. It's kind of like those motorcycles with that one extra wheel, or are they three wheel convertibles? Hmm. Anyways, I was concerned with the stability and it does wobble when you push it a bit, but it stays planted. Just know that the stand doesn't have that much weight to it, so instead it relies on the weight of the TV itself to help with stability, but overall, it's stable enough to not be a concern. The TV runs Vizio Smartcast OS, which is based on Android, so there is an abundance of streaming and other apps available. That's definitely something that I think it has the advantage when compared to LG, the quality and quantity of apps. As far as usability is concerned though, during my initial impressions, I mentioned how the UI wasn't very smooth, but that seemed to have changed with the latest firmware update. It's smoother, but it's still not quite as smooth as something like WebOS. All right, so let's talk about that picture. So the TV uses an OLED panel that's manufactured by LG displayed with a WRGB subpixel array. And looking at the subpixel structure under magnification, it has a large white, red, and blue subpixel and looks a lot like that of the subpixel layout of the panel used in the LG C10. But it could also be the one from 2009 since there weren't any real changes between the two model years. But it uses this is the Vizio IQ Ultra image processor, which will be the differentiating factor when it comes to actual picture performance. The picture that this TV produces can only be described as gorgeous. It has the inky blacks that you'd expect from an OLED and makes darkroom viewing truly great. But it also has the brightness to perform well in a brightly lit room with a good deal of ambient light coming in. It has a built-in ambient light sensor, which you can select the sensitivity of in the picture menu. Speaking of which, I bet you're wondering how the peak brightness of this TV compares to the LG C10 OLED. Well, it's really close. The Vizio manages brightness in a kind of interesting way and has two settings that does that. There is a tone mapping slider to help the TV display scenes which are brighter than what it can support natively. And there's also the peak luminance setting which ranges from low to high, which boosts the overall brightness of the picture. So setting both options to their maximum will let the TV display at its brightest levels. 
At times with both their maximums, the overall brightness of the screen is lower than that of the LG C10, as you may have seen in my picture comparison. But there are times that despite that happening, the brightness of the highlights on the Vizio eclipses that of the LG, and the opposite is also true. Sometimes the Vizio maintains a higher screen brightness than the LG, so I think overall both of them have comparable peak brightness on average. So does that mean it has a similar or even better picture? Well, that depends. The Vizio's picture isn't as contrasty as that of the LG as I've seen. In their most accurate picture modes, the Vizio tends to have the more natural colors, especially for things like skin tone as you may have seen in my LG versus Vizio OLED comparison video. Motion handling on the TV is what you can expect from an OLED, meaning that in some instances it has what can be appearing as judder, which is essentially caused by the way that OLEDs handle motion. But the judder reduction feature set to 2 or 3 is enough to mitigate that without getting any of the soap opera effect or image artifacts, so it really is a non-issue. The TV has a built-in pixel shift setting to reduce and prevent image retention and burn-in as well as a screen refresher setting which can be triggered manually to correct picture dimness which may happen after the TV has been on for an extended period of time. I'm not exactly sure how long that amount of time is though. It supports FreeSync and the HDMI 2.1 spec VRR, variable refresh rate, both for gaming and those two HDMI 2.1 ports both support 4K at 120 Hertz. At least they should. Now, during my testing using my PC, which has an AMD Vega 64 graphics card, I had issues where the TV wouldn't support anything beyond 60 Hz once I got to a resolution over 1080p. At 1080p, there was the option to select 120 Hz, which is as expected, but at every resolution above that, like 1440p or 4K, it was limited to 60 Hz, and that's with VRR enabled and disabled. Looking at the AMD control panel showed that the FreeSync range of the TV was 48 Hz on the low end as opposed to 40 Hz that Vizio says the TV supports in their spec. Let's put it this way, there are definitely some firmware growing pains, but Vizio has publicly committed to fixing those issues so here's hoping they do that in a timely manner. Because as you know, I am not the biggest fan of buying current tech in anticipation of future fixes. That said, gaming on the TV has been absolutely great, although of course I couldn't test the full capabilities of it. But as the comparison with the LG C10 and the Samsung Q90 showed, it is definitely no slouch when it comes to gaming. Picture quality in game mode looks just as gorgeous as the movie mode. But that said, the input lag was definitely higher than its counterparts, though not drastically so. And it does that at a lower cost than both of those TVs. Is it perfect? Certainly not. No TV is, but it has a lot of potential and it is a great first entry into the OLED market because I think they really nailed all the important features. So who is this TV for? Well, I think it's for anyone who wants some of the best picture quality available right now at an absolutely great launch price. The TV combines stunning picture quality with the features that will support pretty much any any device that you need to connect it to with its HDMI 2.1 ports and lossless Dolby Atmos pass-through with its EARC support while also supporting all the HDR standards out there right now which includes both HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision. It's kind of stacked. If you like this video and want to help support the channel so we can bring you more like it then feel free to get an awesome home theater t-shirt from the merch store or this one, the 2020 review. Or you can also use the affiliate links in the description to buy this TV or any of the other recommended TVs. Sound off in the comments and let us know what you think about this TV and if you actually plan on getting one, or maybe you already have one. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it, and of course, subscribe if you haven't yet. You know you want to. Thanks for watching and until next time, this has been your friendly neighborhood villa man saying be safe, peace.